Uh, our next speaker is uh, Rima Obied from uh, the University Hospital in the Saarland, Germany. And she's going to do a follow-up now on uh, blood biomarkers of methylation. Rima. Thank you. So, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. <laughs> this will be my next past photo drawn by David. <laughs> uh, my presentation will deal uh, with biomarkers or potential biomarkers related to the methylation cycle about phospholipids as potential biomarkers and amyloid beta and APP. Um, the strength of our study is that this is the first complete metabolic profile in Down syndrome that suggests probably that we have uh, factors to be modified or to be corrected uh, via uh, nutritional interventions. Uh, the weakness is that this is an observational study, so we don't have an evidence that there is a causality. The gaps to be filled um, will be clinical trials testing the effect of supplements on the metabolism first and then uh, on certain end point or outcomes. So first of all, markers of methylation in the blood. The methylation cycle in the blood probably reflect the liver metabolism because the liver um, is the main met metabolic uh, organs uh, for homocysteine and methionine. You have a pointer. Oh, this is a pointer. So, um, the cystathionine beta synthase is expressed on chromosome 21. Uh, we have additional copy of CBS. That's why we expect that uh, there will be disbalance in the methylation cycle. And the methylation cycle is very important because it links DNA synthesis and methylation with many other pathways where the methyl groups are required and also with uh, glutathione and um, the antioxidant pathway. So there have been studies showing that homocysteine is about 30% lower in people with Down syndrome. And we looked at the other metabolites related to these cycles. We had a small group of people with Down syndrome. Uh, the mean age was 11 years. And we had a group of uh, control children, both uh, uh, groups were uh, non-using uh, vitamins at the time of the study, and um, the results are shown here. This is very complicated. I will summarize it uh, on the uh, cycle again. So we found, um, as in the literature, lower concentrations of homocysteine in Down syndrome, we found higher cystathionine, which is consistent with uh, additional copy of CBS. We found slightly increased uh, cysteine, but a significant increase in cysteine. Uh, glutathione was not different between controls and patients, uh, and, and uh, Down syndrome, I mean. Uh, methionine was also not different. Betaine and choline were higher in Down syndrome compared to the controls. SRM was higher, and this is uh, relatively not expected, but SRH was higher than, uh, the increase in SRH was higher than the increase in SRM, so the uh, SRM to SRH ratio was lower in Down syndrome compared to non-Down syndrome. So there are multiple uh, disorders probably caused by uh, this additional copy of CBS. And we are currently trying to um, model this cycle uh, uh, using a mathematical model in collaboration with Fred Nyhut from the US, and to try to add certain substrates or nutrients to modify this cycle in Down syndrome to be more similar to non-Down syndrome. And the 
the current expectation or prediction is that methionine is, um, have a higher turnover rate in Down syndrome and by using a diet that is poor of methionine and rich in betaine, -E, we can probably um, make this metabolic pathway most similar to non-Down syndrome people. We also were um, surprised to find that there is a kind of compensation in Down syndrome. So the uh, remethylation pathway, I will come back um, via this alternative uh, uh, methyl substrate, betaine seems to be over expressed and there seems to be higher vitamin B12 status which might support an increased remethylation via folate. But uh, we don't know anything about uh, the methylation cycle in the brain which might be different because uh, the alternative remethylation pathway is not functional in the brain and cystathionase is also low in the brain. So we don't know anything about the methyl group metabolism in the brain. The second point uh, are the phospholipids. There are several studies showing that um, the membrane component of the phospholipids probably uh, are very important for um, the toxicity or the accumulation of amyloid beta. And here are two examples. Um, it has been shown here that a higher um, sphingomyelin can increase the aggregability of amyloid beta and that uh, lowering phosphatidyl ethanolamine can enhance the uh, toxicity of amyloid beta, uh, can reduce the toxicity of amyloid beta. Um, the metabolism of uh, phospholipid is closely related to the methylation cycle. Choline is one important substrate supplied by the diet, um, is one important substrate for producing phosphatidylcholine, and choline can inhibit the synthesis of phosphatidyl ethanolamine, which is another substrate for uh, phosphatidyl choline uh, uh, synthesis via phosphatidyl ethanolamine methyl transferase. And this pathway uh, represents uh, or is responsible for producing only 30% of phosphatidyl choline in the liver, but it produces uh, three uh, uh, SRH molecules. And phosphatidyl choline. Um, is a substrate for uh, a synthesis of sphingomyelin, which, is, um, which can convert to ceramides, and ceramides can um, enhance the toxicity and the accumulation of amyloid beta. And um, there is evidence that the composition of the lipid rafts can be one important factor to uh, determine whether the uh, APP will follow the beta or the alpha uh, pathway. We tested uh, the concentrations of phospholipids in blood of Down syndrome patients or people, uh, the same group that I showed before, and we found um, almost in all cases higher concentrations of phospholipids. Here are the classes. Uh, where we found significant differences and the difference was always in the same direction. So people with Down syndrome had higher concentrations of uh, the phospholipid classes shown here. The difference was between 20 and 40 percent. Um, if we zoom up the phospholipids, we found uh, sometimes tendency but in most times, uh, as you see here, phosphatidyl ethanolamine was significantly higher. Uh, sphingomyelin was significantly higher. So sphingomyelin was the most impressive uh, phospholipid class uh, that was different between Down syndrome and non-Down syndrome. Now the final point, uh, amyloid beta and amyloid precursor protein. In the same group of Down syndrome, 
we measured amyloid beta 42 in blood and we found higher concentration compared to the controls. There was almost no overlap or very small overlap uh, in the concentrations of amyloid beta. And there was a positive association between plasma SRM and plasma amyloid beta um, in Down syndrome people. In the control, this association was not uh, significant. So we think we don't know the meaning or the value of amyloid beta in plasma, but we think that there is an over uh, uh, production of amyloid beta, and we think that SRM may enhance uh, a beta clearance from the brain. We did several experiments on Down syndrome fibroblasts incubated in a medium that was free of the B vitamins. We incubated with uh, different concentrations of homocysteine, SRH, and SRM. And we found that SRH was able to um, cause an overexpression of APP, um, I mean as a protein. Um, we did not measure here gene expression, only the, the level of APP uh, protein was uh, in, were increased uh, by SRH and there was no um, concentration dependent manner, probably because we are using here very high concentration of SRH. Um, the effect of SRH on APP was reversible by uh, beta and gamma secretase inhibitors and um, it was uh, very impressive to see that SRH is causing lower uh, amyloid beta in the medium and higher amyloid beta in cell extracts and SRM is just causing the opposite, um, higher amyloid beta in the medium and lower amyloid beta in the uh, cell extract. So we think that SRM might enhance the clearance of amyloid beta from the brain. Uh, I mean, this case is fibroblast, but this might be also correct in the brain and high SRH may enhance a better accumulation in the brain. So, um, the tools we need for future um, studies, we think that we need a collaborative studies between people working on clinical outcomes and people working on metabolism. We need participants, we need uh, neurologists, we need uh, study nurses, and we need, of course, sources of funding. And uh, this is my thought about um, how the community can help. I think we should make the, the world aware of us, of our activities. We should maybe have uh, publications together um, and uh, of course, a grants application. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Rima, for keeping the time. We have time for a couple of questions. I'd like, like to ask one. One of the things we're finding here, I don't think we're unique in the UK, that many parents uh, give their Down syndrome children a whole range of supplements some of which might be effective, some of which I'm really sure are not effective. Have you any suggestions as to what might be used uh, with p potential value uh, that can be available over the counter, like choline or...? Well, um, we had many parents that used supplement also, but this was an yeah. exclusion criteria in this study. And our studies suggest that um, I, I won't say choline, maybe beta in uh, yes. will be helpful and you should ensure that B12 folate and B6 status are oh. at least in the normal range. Yeah, oh, thanks. Let me, let me ask a quick question. So how does the increased dose of CBS explain the changes that you see in these various intermediates in, in, the, in the pathway, the homocysteine pathway? Well, the, we don't have evidence, but the first impression is that the CBS overdose um, 
is not a single factor. No. There, there is a compensation, there, no. there is an over uh, activity probably of the remutilation pathway, probably there is a great need for SRM. Uh, mm. which can only be compensated by uh, increasing the remutilation. So it's not clear why. And but does this play out in the mouse as well? Have Sorry? people looked at this in the mouse models? Uh, with what, what do you mean? Uh, at, at the levels of homocysteine and SAM and SAH? Or? Not as much as I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, it would be invaluable. Other questions? Did you have a question? Helga? What do you see? Um, we see that they are very lean, you know, that the, um, the, the Down syndrome are a bit obese, and what we see here is that they are quite lean. And so we are investigating both the uh, Down syndrome and uh, the, the, those who have CBS deficiency. Um, so we consider, I'm um, collaborating with Rima now in terms of just exactly these things. So we think that uh, in terms of One more question. It's not really a question. We, we had a, a long time to get a model of overexpression of CBS in mice. So now we have uh, some mice overexpressing CBS. And uh, I hope the paper will be accepted after revision. And we uh, uh, assayed the profile of all these things. Uh, in the cerebellum and in the in the hippocampus, and shown that there was no uh, defect in behavioral uh, uh, studies except for LTP, which was increased. So it may be published in a few weeks. I hope. But I think that the problem here is more than uh, one additional copy of CBS. So your you, your model. Um, in your model, you produced animals with uh, one additional copy of CBS, but I think that there is in Down syndrome other factors interfering. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. No. No. Okay. Thanks very much, Rima. Uh, <coughs>